Okay, time for a new video, and whether you are somebody new to my channel, or you are returning to my channel to watch this video, it is greatly appreciated. As always, I'm filming this video in one go, so if I stumble over my words moving forwards, apologies about that, and also if the quality of this video is fairly poor as well. If there's any lag, anything like that at all, sadly it cannot be helped, and hopefully it is not too much of an issue for you. This is yet another Eurovision 2023 related video here on my channel, and a general update of sorts, something that I've wanted to film for about two weeks now. In this video I'll be talking a little bit about my plans for May, because I do have some plans for later in the year, and also the general future of this channel. Nothing serious, but there are a few things that I'd like to discuss. As always, let me know your thoughts on anything I mention in this video in the comments. Leave a comment if you so wish, leave a like, subscribe, all of that good stuff, it's much appreciated. And as always, there are links in the description to my other social media pages, check them out if you so wish. I'm going to begin this general update video by talking a little bit about those other social media pages. I have a Twitter page, I've had it for years, I don't really use it or scroll through it a great deal. But every now and then I voice my opinion, and... Sometimes I do polls on there as well. Not a lot of people vote in them. That's because maybe I don't have a huge following, which is fine. But every now and then I do put up a few polls. Uh, I recently did one where I asked people uh, if they thought we'd heard the winning Eurovision 2023 entry yet based on the songs that are confirmed for the contest and the national final songs that are out there. And I said, have we heard the winner yet? And I think that poll has closed, and most people said that yes, we have heard the winning song by now. So that's the sort of thing I do on my Twitter page every now and then. Polls. So I'm letting you know that if you have a Twitter account, you can keep an eye on my page, and you can vote in those polls as and when. Otherwise, it's just me occasionally sharing links to other social media pages of mine, and occasionally chipping in with my opinion like everybody else on there. I also have what I call my Facebook writing page. It's a sort of more professional, less personal looking Facebook page where I share links to uh, the social media pages of mine. And usually um, I post links to my blog and any poetry that I write as well. So that's there for you to take a look at if you so wish as well. Then I have my personal Instagram page, which is just my name. And if you're interested in original writing at all, you can see some of mine on there. I've also got my uh, page where I post my poetry. I've been writing poetry for over a decade now. I studied creative writing for both my undergraduate and postgraduate degrees. So you can take a look at some of my poetry on that website too. I think that's in the description. I ought to know, can't quite remember. And then I have the Instagram page that I co-run with my good friend Peter, rajc.esc. Um... My friend has been in Asia recently, so I've really been in control of that page more than ever before. But it's ticking along quite nicely. We post our favourites, uh, updates about songs and artists that are confirmed for the upcoming contest, that sort of thing. It's all general stuff. But take a look and give us a follow, leave a like, comment, all of that good stuff again. It is much appreciated. And that wasn't even my idea, it was my friend's idea. They saw my YouTube channel, we were talking about it one day last summer. I think it was around then. And they said, well, why don't you create an Instagram page to go along with it? And I said, well, if you set it up, I'll join in. And so that's exactly what's happened. And we sort of co-run it, which is really nice. And it works quite well, I think, because I know a fair bit about Eurovision and have followed it for years. My friend Peter is a bit of a Eurovision novice. So it's always interesting to hear what he thinks about certain songs as an absolute neutral, somebody who's never heard of these artists, even if they're returning to a national final, as somebody who doesn't really know about a country's track record or anything like that, it's always good to hear what he's got to say. So there is that page as well. That's pretty much it. But there is also the WordPress blog. And I started my WordPress blog when I was an undergraduate, years ago at the University of Northampton, because uh, one of the modules I studied was journalism, and my journalism lecturer said... If you're serious about journalism, it might be a good idea to start building up an online portfolio, and to do that you might want a blog. I recommend WordPress. That was pretty much what he said. So I created a blog, even though I wasn't the slightest bit serious about going into journalism as a career, and I was going to use that blog for my original writing. Didn't use it for months and months, and then in the summer of 2012, I started posting on there, 
and for a long, long time it was original pieces of writing. So if you go back on there, uh, years and years and years and years, you'll see old university work of mine. It's not that great, I should warn you. But over the past five or six years, it's definitely become more of a Eurovision-related blog. Uh, as soon as we get a song, whether that's an internal choice or through a national selection, at some point I'm sitting down and I'm typing a couple of hundred words, uh, giving you my thoughts on the song. I very recently finished typing up my thoughts on Croatia's entry for this year. I've still got Italy to go. And then obviously, as we get more songs for the Liverpool staged competition later this year, I'll be doing blog posts about them as well. And you can go back years, pre when I started making videos on YouTube, to read my thoughts on certain songs, my predictions and everything. And I spent so much time typing those blog posts up in the past. A complete review of the contest. 3,000 words or something. It was like a full-on essay. And I sort of said to myself, maybe about two years ago now, I can't really keep doing this. I haven't got the time. So things like that are more bullet points now, more than ever before. And uh, it's a lot simpler for me, but also... Uh, maybe it's not as interesting to read because I'm not going into my thoughts in as much detail. And I think that's because I started doing YouTube. So the two sort of go hand in hand. I'm talking about my thoughts. I'm also writing about my thoughts in slightly less detail. But the blog is there for you if you want to take a look. Really, I think moving forwards I'll be using the blog less for Eurovision-related content, or I'll certainly be typing less words about it, because it's very time-consuming, and uh, it can get very irritating just sort of saying the same thing over and over and over again. I am not a professional critic, so I'm using the same words and the same terms and phrases so many times. Anyway, it is there if you want to take a look. So moving on away from the social media pages, let me talk a little bit about my plans for May, because I don't think I've really discussed it at all anywhere on the internet yet, and I want to talk about it just to sort of see what other people's plans are as well, um, to see if there's something I'm not thinking about that I should be thinking about. So yeah, I'm just going to get straight into it. I was here having my lunch last year one day and it came upon BBC News uh, we've got some breaking news the BBC has officially agreed to step in and stage Eurovision 2023 on behalf of Ukraine I thought this is great so later on that day I got in touch with my friend the same friend who co-runs the Instagram page with me my friend Peter who I've known for years and I threatened him and said you're coming with me next May or else <laughs> it wasn't quite like that I was a lot nicer than that but I pretty much said to him I really am going to try and go to this and I'm going to want you to come with me now you're probably thinking you could just go by yourself Reese. absolutely but also not that simple I'll explain why later on if I remember so anyway me and my friend Pete we started having a couple of conversations about it this was well before we knew which two cities were going to be left in contention Skip forward several weeks. It's between Liverpool and Glasgow. So me and my friend start talking about those locations. Uh, we've been to neither city. I don't think my friend has been to Glasgow. Can't quite remember, but certainly I've never been to either of those locations. So we look at Liverpool. We look at the arena in question. We look at accommodation. We do the same for Glasgow. We know that Liverpool is about three and a half hours north of where we live by car. So we could get there by car. I don't drive, my friend does, he'd be doing the journey. Glasgow would be a lot more difficult because it's in Scotland, it's even further north, we'd probably have to get a cheap flight. So we were talking about all of these things and then we were talking mainly about the accommodation side of things. And I was saying, do we book accommodation in the hope that we can get tickets for the show? And then if we don't get tickets for the show, we've still got this hotel room for one or two nights. Do we just watch the contest in Liverpool or Glasgow on a big screen somewhere? Would it be the same? I don't really know. Would you want to do that? Bearing in mind that you are not as much of a Eurovision fan as I am. All of these questions, and we were going on and on and on about it. And it ended up actually working out quite nicely. Because Glasgow wasn't chosen. If Glasgow had been chosen, it would have been really really difficult to try and work out uh, a plan uh, we would have tried very hard to get there but 
the expense might have been an issue, in all honesty. Even if it was a fleeting trip up to Scotland, the expense might have been a bit of a pain in the ass. So thankfully, Liverpool came out on top. Okay, not exactly on our doorstep, didn't expect it to be, but it's easier to get to. We wouldn't have to fly. And we did think about train travel as well. My God, we would have had to have four different trains up there. It would have taken six hours or something. The expense would have been through the roof. The train drivers are on strike left, right and centre anyway. It would have been a real, real issue. So it was always going to be in the car. And my friend was okay with this. They made that very clear, which was great. As for the accommodation, we, as of this moment right now, nothing's been confirmed on the accommodation front. And you're probably thinking now, well, that's a bit silly, because hotel rooms were going for several thousand pounds a night. Absolutely. I saw those prices, couldn't believe it. Wasn't terribly surprised, but also at the same time, couldn't believe that they were quite that pricey. The plan is this. I'm finally getting to it, ladies and gentlemen. I'm just going to reel it off. Saturday the 13th of May, hopefully, me and my friend have got tickets for the show. He comes up to my house. We don't live in the same town, but he's about 15 minutes away by car. He pulls up to my house, maybe about 8am. I get in the car. I've got a stash of belongings with me. So's he. And off we go, straight up to Liverpool. We arrive probably about half past 11 in the morning. Then we make our way to the arena and we loiter about there for as long as necessary. Then we go in and have an absolute blast watching the live final. It's a great, great moment. Then we come out, we get back to the car and we're off. Are we coming back to where we live in Northamptonshire? No, we're not. We're going to go to Manchester, which is, I don't know, about an hour and a half east of Liverpool by car. Now you're probably thinking, well, why are you going there? Because we may have free accommodation. Because uh, my friend has a relative who lives on the outskirts of Manchester and it's very possible that we could stay there for free for one night. Very, very handy indeed. And then we come back on the Sunday morning. Fantastic. It hasn't been confirmed yet, but I think it may as well be confirmed. And should we get tickets for the Saturday final, that is what will be happening almost certainly. It will be a very fleeting trip to Liverpool, which is maybe a bit of a shame. But at the same time, we don't really want to hang about for too long. We know what we're going for, so we will watch the contest, absolutely love it, hopefully get some footage as well, and then we'll be coming home the next day. We're not planning to go for many days, mainly because of work and time and the expense. So it will be arrive on the Saturday, and then come back on the Sunday. That was a massive ramble, but that's pretty much what the plan is. Of course, we need to get tickets first. As I'm recording this video, we don't know when tickets are going on sale, but it will be within the next three weeks. And if it's anything like previous years, chances are they'll be released in waves. Now, I sat down with my friend and I said to him, what show do you want to get tickets for? And we ruled out any show on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, any show pre the Saturday really because of work and time constraints and things like that. So I said, well, what about the Friday evening jury show? Oh, that's a possibility. What about the family show on the Saturday? Oh, that's a possibility. What about the actual live big one on the Saturday night? To be honest, that's the one that's standing out to me more. So we have sort of agreed that we will do everything in our power to get tickets for the big one. It will be nigh on impossible. But we're going to give it a go. If we fail, we will try and get tickets for the family show earlier on on the Saturday. If we fail that, we will try and get tickets for the jury show on the Friday night. If we fail that, we're not going. I'd be highly surprised. Now, I know what you're thinking again here. You might well be thinking, well, you could go to Liverpool anyway, watch it on a big screen, have an absolutely great time around Eurovision fans from all over the continent. Yes, we could do that. But I don't really fancy standing outside in potentially bad weather for several hours watching the show on a big screen when I'm thinking to myself I could be in that arena watching it in person which would be even better. So to be honest it's either be there in the arena or bust. That's the way I'm seeing it. I think that's the way my friend is seeing it. We want to watch it with our own eyes rather than actually just peering up at a screen. So we're going to do the best we can. And hopefully we're going to be able to be together to try and get tickets. I've said to my friend, 
You might have to have the day of work or something. I might be free anyway. So whenever tickets go on sale, hopefully we'll be in the same room next to each other. Laptop, phone, ready to go. Neither of us have really tried to get tickets for a show this in demand before. But we'll try. And I've also spoken to my friend about the price of these tickets. I said they're not going to be cheap. You're looking at probably £200 minimum here for the final, if not £300 minimum. It is a massive expense, but also potentially a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So I threatened him again <laughs> and said, look, you've got to do this. And so we have a budget, we have an idea in mind of how much we're willing to spend. And if, unfortunately, uh, the seats that we're looking at, and we've got a good... Well, I've got a good idea as to where I'd like to sit in the arena, side on aisle. Um, if it's out of the price range, we might just have to pass or look at another show. It's as simple as that. We don't want to be faffing about for too long. We know we're going to have to be lightning fast. Uh, the website might crash anyway. All manner of things could happen, but we want to be prepared as best as possible. We want to go in knowing what we're looking for, knowing how much we're willing to spend, and then hopefully it's going to be a fairly smooth process. It will be stressful, but it is what it is. I don't know why my PlayStation's beeping there. Bear with me. Uh... There we go. <clears throat> so, where was I? Yes, tickets. We're going to give it a right good go, ladies and gentlemen, as I'm sure many of you will too. Uh, never tried it before, never really needed to try it before, but uh, we'll see what happens. And that will be probably within the next three weeks or so. I can't imagine tickets will be going on sale much later than mid-March, but we'll see. Um, going back to the point I made earlier, why don't you just go by yourself? Ah, could do it. But I'd rather not have a minor anxiety flare-up. I would rather feel a bit more comforted, if you see what I mean, knowing that there's somebody there in case things go completely pear-shaped. So that's why I roped my friend Peter in. I asked a few other friends as well, um, but Peter's the main one, and he's been very supportive and understanding, and hopefully he sticks with me through this. And so hopefully, uh, if I end up in Liverpool, he'll be there by my side and we'll have an absolutely smashing time together. And uh, we'll have a right laugh and hopefully some footage. The plan is to get some footage from Liverpool, post photos online, maybe make a big vlog, be in the arena filming some of it. That would be absolutely incredible. I mean, that's the hope. That's the big wish here. And uh, hopefully it will happen. If not, I'll be sitting here watching it on TV, <laughs> no doubt. Once again, filming my reaction and then whacking it up on YouTube straight afterwards. Uh, but of course, the dream is to actually get some footage from the arena in Liverpool. And also, I know I said a few moments ago that there wouldn't be much of a point heading up there if I'm not going to be in the arena watching the live show. Something that could change that is because I have a really great friend who lives up north who I haven't seen in nearly 20 years in person. And they could well be in Liverpool for Eurovision. So the possibility of meeting up with them and having this very nice reunion, that's quite appealing. So it might be worth going up there for that as well as Eurovision. I don't know. It's months away. There's still a few things to iron out. Um, but the big, big plan... Be together, me and my friend, get tickets for the Saturday final, and then drive up. My friend drives up on the Saturday. After the contest, we head to the outskirts of Manchester, stay there overnight, come home on the Sunday morning, and then that's it. And then I make videos reviewing the show, reviewing the entire contest, and hopefully I'll have a vlog to put together and whack up on YouTube as well. Footage from Liverpool. That would be immense. So there you go. That's the plan, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have you got a budget uh, for this year's contest? I mean, I haven't even spoken about uh, buying things if I was there. You know, merchandise and things like that. I probably would buy a program, absolutely. And I don't know if I'd really fork out money for a scarf. I went to the Women's European Championships final at Wembley last year. And I bought a program, which was a bit of a waste of time, because 99% of what was in there was in a program that I had from a game a few days previously. And I could have bought a scarf, but they were something like 40 or £50. Pounds. Outrageous prices. I might just see what the merchandise is like on the Eurovision website in a few weeks or whatever, because they'll start posting stuff on there. Um, but yeah, again, it's all about the budget, it's all about the expense. We'll see. We'll see.
This has been a massive ramble, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you're sticking with it. There's really not much else to say about plans for May at all. Um, I think what would be very painful is seeing a lot of people that I follow on YouTube there in Liverpool, perhaps in the arena for the live shows, whether that's the jury show, family show, or an actual live show itself. I think I'd just feel too jealous, and I wouldn't want to make any videos myself. I'd be thinking, nah, stuff them. Stuff it. I'll just, you know, not film anything, keep my opinions to myself. I think the jealousy would be through the roof, which is not great, but I think that's what would happen. So... I am going to do everything I can to get there. And maybe I could meet some of you there as well. Who knows? It would be a fleeting visit, but that would be fantastic. Anyway, the future of this channel. There's really not much to say here at all. Firstly, I am absolutely aware that the quality, the overall look of my videos is not that great. That's because my machine is ancient. And because of expense and several other reasons, I have not been able to update this machine for a very long time. The plan is within the next couple of months to get a new one, at last, and hopefully, surely, the quality will be better, ladies and gentlemen. So bear with me, because hopefully the content on my channel will not look this shoddy moving forwards. Um, also, the way that I present myself in my videos isn't really going to change that much. They're still going to be unscripted, they're still going to be rambly, uh, they're still going to be unedited. Uh, that's the way it's always going to be, uh, but maybe once I get a new machine, uh, learn to do a few more things, maybe I'll have my own thumbnails. That would be quite cool. I don't know, maybe I'll uh, just make the overall look of my channel a little bit more professional. I don't know, but I'm just giving you a heads up that, yes, the quality will be improving soon at some point. I am very hopeful about that. And secondly, uh, you can still expect for a long, long time rambles, waffling, that sort of thing. I'm not really going to change my style. I'm always very honest with my opinions. I never go out of my way to be rude or offensive. But if I don't like a song, I will say I don't like a song. It's nothing against the country. It's more than I think your country's entry is pants. That's all it is, ladies and gentlemen. So, that's really all I've got to say about this channel. I was losing subscribers, actually. Um... Not a lot, but I was losing subscribers earlier this year, and now that we're getting closer to the real uh, time of Eurovision, shall, shall we say, every year, where loads of songs are being released and predictions are being made and what have you, uh, I am actually gaining more subscribers now, which is really, really lovely. I think I'm on just over 750. That's a nice number. Still small, but I'm completely fine with it. Numbers and statistics and things don't really matter much to me. Uh, it's just YouTube is a good place to sit down and talk about something that I'm very passionate about with like-minded individuals, some of whom have the same opinions as me, some who don't. That's completely fine. I like watching a lot of Eurovision-related YouTube, although I am cutting back because it's just too much. For example, last Saturday night, Super Saturday, uh, we had so many songs for this year's contest being selected. I looked at my YouTube feed and it was just 30 videos. My top 15, my top 15. And I thought, do I really want to sit through all of these? I don't think I do. So I am cutting back on the amount of Eurovision-related content that I watch. It's nothing against those content creators. It's just that I don't have the time or necessarily the motivation to do it. It's a bit like the blog. The motivation for that really has been waning of late. So there we go. I will finish off this exceptionally messy video by talking a little bit about the songs for Eurovision 2023 so far, because I haven't really spoken about them too much, uh, although I will do in my next What We Know So Far video. So let's go through every country very, very briefly, because this is not a What We Know So Far video. Croatia. I, I, it's not a country I'm familiar with. Uh, Ireland. No chance. Pick the wrong song. Latvia. Nice entry. No chance of progressing, in my opinion, even though it's a shorter semi-final. Malta, it's a fun track. I think it runs out of steam towards the end, but it's one of the best choices Malta could have made. Norway, honestly, could win this year's contest if the quality doesn't improve. Portugal, I think whatever they send, they'll do all right. Serbia, same deal. Azerbaijan, we don't know. Czech Republic in it to win it. Finland in it to win it. We've got the running order for UMK now. Israel, high hopes for that. Moldova, God only knows what they're going to send. I think it will be Sunstroke Project. That would be a bit disappointing, but there we are. Netherlands, I've got high hopes for that. Sweden, 
People are saying it's a very poor Melfest. Doesn't matter because they're probably still going to send a song that can get them a top 10 result. Loreen is there. I think this year's Melfest is hers to lose. Switzerland, we've no idea. Armenia, I've got very high hopes for that. Belgium, I'm not really much of a fan of the song, but it might go through. Cyprus, I'm not expecting much. Denmark, I like it, but he is very reliant on the backing vocals. Estonia, great stuff should cruise through. Greece, big controversy there. Don't really know what the situation is. Iceland, I like their national final lineup, but I'm not expecting them to do incredibly well this year. Romania, I've barely seen anybody talk about that song. As far as I'm concerned, it is nearly dead on arrival. Albania, nice track, gotta wait for the revamp. Australia, I think they've forgotten they're taking part, but I think they could be in it to win it. Austria, we know the act, the song's been leaked apparently, I've heard nothing. We wait and see. Georgia, they need something massive because they haven't qualified for years. Lithuania, like a movie all the way. I think it could be a really, really close result, though. Poland, I think they'll be all right this year. They'll be in the final. San Marino, God only knows. Slovenia, they'll qualify. France, we get the song later this week. There'll be a video of me reacting to it all being well. Very high hopes. Germany, God help them. Italy, quality. Spain, quality. Ukraine, should be absolutely nowhere near winning this year. And the United Kingdom... All I hope is that it is as good, if not better, than Spaceman. There's rumours it could be the newly reformed S Club 7. Yes, fine, but it's 2023, not 2003. Let's pick something a little bit more with it and up to date. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really, really sorry for the massive ramble, but let me know your plans for May if you've got any. Uh, are you going to be in Liverpool? Are you going to be travelling to the UK? Uh, are you going to be watching it with a group of friends, having a Eurovision party, what have you, that sort of thing? Whatever it is, let me know, and I'll be back with more Eurovision-related content very soon. Apologies if the quality of this video wasn't that great. I always apologise for it, because I know it annoys some people, but like I said, it will be improving at some point soon, all being well. Until next time, take care of yourselves, stay safe, and bye for now.